Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 58 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to continue making the video game while demonstrating how to use UML class diagrams like we have over here to create Java classes. Today, we're going to be working on our torpedo or our gun or whatever you want to refer to it. And I'm just going to be taking what I created here on the right side of the screen and transferring it over here. If you haven't watched all the previous parts of this tutorial, you definitely should. Otherwise, you will be confused. And if you want the complete program and you want to start shooting torpedoes right now underneath this video there is a link to all of the completed code from both this tutorial as well as the next tutorial right here I'm gonna focus on just creating the photon torpedo class so the very first thing I'm gonna do is create an integer and this is going to hold my board width and to get my board width I'm just gonna go game board board width and there you go, got that. And I'm also going to want to get my height. And these two guys are going to be used to make the torpedoes disappear whenever they go off of the screen. So that's why I need to get those things. And as I progress through here, I'm going to explain exactly why I thought I needed what's on the right side of the screen. And then I'm going to go private, double, center X. And this guy is going to start out at zero, zero. And this is going to be the center of my polygon or my torpedo. And it's going to start out when it first appears on the screen right where the nose of the ship is because it makes sense for the torpedo to come out of the nose of the ship. And then I'm going to create all of the vectors that are going to be needed to draw my polygon because it says up here photon torpedo extends polygon. So it's going to be important for me to have all of those. And I'm just doing this so that I can use floating point values to be able to draw vectors pretty much anywhere on the screen. And I'm not tied down to all the problems that come about whenever we try to use integers. And again, talked about that in previous parts of the tutorial. And then I also need to hold my y vector points and then these just you need to change a little bit and this is just going to be a basic square so that's where all this stuff is coming from and there you go got that all set up then i'm going to list out here the width and height of my torpedo of course this could be changed but i saw no reason for it to change for this part of the tutorial and of course i'm sure you know how to change it if you would want to have different size bullets for some reason then, also, if my torpedo goes off of the screen, I'm going to want to know that so that I don't waste computer time trying to draw something that is not even on the screen for anybody to see. And each torpedo, I'm going to start off with a value of false. So that's by default not going to show on the screen. And then I'm also going to need to store my angle that my torpedo is going to be moving around on a screen. And this is going to be whatever angle the nose of the ship is whenever everything's going to be created. And all I'm doing is I'm just taking stuff from the right side of the screen and moving it over to the left side of the screen. That's why UML class diagrams are so useful. You don't have to think. Then I'm going to have a velocity, and this is basically what it's going to do, is whenever I hit the enter key, it's going to say, okay, where is the nose of the ship? What is the angle of the ship? And then how quickly are we going to move our torpedo down that angle or that imaginary line? And this guy, this is just really dummy values because they're going to change immediately whenever the torpedo is first created. But I'm just throwing five in there just for the heck of it. And then the very next thing I need to do is create my constructor. And if anything doesn't make sense, leave a comment below and I will be glad to try to help you through this. But you're going to find if you get a hold of the code that you're probably going to be able to understand almost everything here because the code's really heavily commented. Photon Torpedo is going to be created and it's going to be passed the X and Y value of whatever the nose of the spaceship are as well as whatever the angle of the spaceship is. So that's going to work out real nice. And then I'm going to create my polygon. You may wonder why if I'm drawing this as a rectangle, I don't just have it as a rectangle instead of a polygon. The reason why is I want to have the functionality or the ease to change this to anything I want it to be later on in the tutorial. So if I decide I don't want it to be a rectangle, well, since it's set up to be a polygon, that's not going to be a problem. And another thing that keeps coming up is people keep asking me what book this comes from. There is no book. I'm doing this out of my head for better or for worse. Of course, I've learned some math in the past, so I guess it came out of those math books that I've used. And then I'm just going to say, okay, well, I want the center of my torpedo to be equal to the center X and Y points for the spaceship that are going to be passed over, or the spaceship nose. And then I'm also going to go moving angle is also going to be equal to whatever the moving angle for the spaceship is whenever 
it is fired. And there you are. Now, since this has been fired, I'm going to say on screen, I now want you to have a value of true because the torpedo is now on the screen. And then I need to set how quickly the torpedo moves along the path that is going to be defined by two methods I'm going to create in a second called set x velocity and set y velocity. And this is just going to define how quickly they move down the x and y path. Torpedo x move. And we're going to be doing this pretty much exactly the same way that we moved our spaceship around. And you can see there, there's moving angle. That's the spaceship's moving angle. And I'm going to multiply that times 10 so that it moves quickly along that path. And we're going to create all this stuff here in a second. Copy that, paste that in there, and then we're going to do the same thing for Y. Remember, this X and Y point is for the center of the torpedo, or the little rectangle on the screen. So that is what we're going to be changing, and then all this stuff up here is just automatically going to draw our rectangle, or our polygon, or our torpedo, whatever you want to refer to it as. And all of that is going to remain the same as well. So, that's all we need to do. And just so you can see what set X velocity is, I'm going to go and create it right now, even though I don't have it created right now. Set x velocity meaning that it's not on the right side of the screen in this order set x velocity and it's going to receive just a double and then it's going to say this x velocity is equal to whatever the x velocity that was passed over that's it so it's not that complicated let's set that to uppercase v and then guess what the set y velocity is going to do pretty much exactly the same thing y and y and y so that's that so right here set x velocity and right here, set x velocity. That's what those guys do. They just receive a double, and they set it to whatever is set for our torpedo. So then your next question is, well, what does torpedo x move angle do? So I'm going to show you that. What it's going to do is calculate the torpedo angle of movement. Now this is trigonometry again. So and I'm going to show you a little diagram here to explain like I did previously. So torpedo x move angle. Just going to copy that, paste that inside of there, and it's going to receive a double, and we know that, and that double is going to be the move x move angle. So what exactly does it do? Well, I'm going to type out the calculation and explain it. It's going to go return, and it's going to return. We're going to cast this to a double, and then we got to use some trigonometry. So math dot and cosine. If you get the x move angle for that vector, multiply it times math dot pi divided by 180 and we do that so that this is set to radians because cosine accepts radians not degrees and then i'm just going to go in here and do the torpedo y movement as well and then explain showing a little triangle exactly what's going on here so we're going to go torpedo y move angle and there's y again and there's y again except this is going to change just a little tiny bit this is going to be sine and this is how easy it is to define on the fly using some trig methods to define what is the y vector based off of a starting x point versus whatever the angle is we want to move it. And I showed you this guy here in the past. Basically what we have here for torpedo x move angle, see we have to get these x and y points. And that's what you can see right here. So if this is the angle that we are working with here for the spaceship or the torpedo, and I want to get my x value, which would be represented by this adjacent right here. If I want to get whatever the x is for my bullet, which is going to be moving. So let's just say the bullet is shot right here, and there is no y, and we're just going to increase x. Well, we just need to figure out what are all these different vector points here, right with that guy. And if you want to find all those vector points to follow along this line that we have right here, you just need to get the cosine of whatever this angle is in radians. And likewise, if you want to be able to find the y points, or whatever is going on with this line right here, you just need to take the sine of whatever the angle is, and that's going to give you those x and y vectors. So this is what we're working with right here, except this is going to be a cross. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Just, just basic trigonometry. So let's get back up into here and start fixing some of our other things. So right after here, so that we can follow along with our... UML class diagram I have over here so I don't get confused. We're going to go public and we're going to go double and we're going to have to have a way to get a hold of the center x point. And this guy's real simple. All it's going to do is return center x right like that. And then 
we're also going to have to get the Y position, and that's how we do that, and that's how we do that. Real simple stuff. We're just encapsulating all this code. And like I've said before, anytime you're going to be getting values, chances are you're going to need to set them. Maybe not, but what the heck, might as well put them in there so that they're in there if you ever decide you want to use them in the future. And this is just going to return nothing, so we're going to put void inside of there and void inside of there. However, it is going to receive a double, and this is going to be x cent. Might as well copy this, paste that in there, and this is going to be y cent. So x and y point for the center of our torpedo. That, this, reference to the torpedo, of course, is equal to x cent and is equal to y cent. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I'm setting these values that I've created above. That's all I'm doing, nothing that fancy. Okay, scroll this up. As you can see, all I'm doing is copying from the right side of the screen to the left. Well, another thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to change my X position. Let's just save myself some time. Basic sort of format of this. That. This is going to receive nothing. And then we're going to say change X position. And it's going to receive a double and increment or decrement amount. This is going to be increment amount, and this is change, because it can either go up or down. And then this guy, the reason why I copied this, is I'm going to go plus, and then I'm going to go plus with this, and then all I need to do is do increment amount. And that's just going to change the center point for the torpedo on a whim. Now, like I said before, anytime you're going to set values, chances are you're going to be getting values. So let's come in here and do that. And this is going to be double get x velocity and real simply it's just going to return whatever the current x velocity is like i said if you don't need it that's no problem it's, but if you do need it it's nice to know that it's already there or anybody that's going to use your code for creating their own sort of video game and there you are and then also going to come in here and create a way to be able to get the width of our torpedo so public int get width return torpedo width there that is and then we're also going to get the height. And if we want to be able to change the torpedo movement angle for some reason, again, this is something that I'm not going to use here currently, but it's nice to have it if I want it. And it's just going to get a double move angle. And then say this moving angle is equal to moving angle. Copy that guy, paste that in there. And then we're also going to get moving angle, double, don't need anything here, and return moving angle. And then, of course, set that to move angle, which is what is passed over here. Another thing we're going to need to do is we're going to get to collision detection here in a second. I know you know, already know how to do that, but because we've done it so many times before, but I'll cover it again. Get bounds. So I want you to be able to make this stuff, not just copy it from me. Okay, return new rectangle. Again, everything's going to be represented as a rectangle. And to create this guy, we're going to go get width, and we're going to go minus sixth, which is the width of my torpedo or my rectangle on the square because basically what I want to get here is the upper x position. So if I get the total width of the rectangle or the torpedo and then subtract that width from it, if it's at some vector point other than zero on the screen, it's going to give me that very specific position. Okay, and then get height. We're going to do the same thing. So we just want the x and y upper left hand corner x and y position. And then we need to define what the width is. So just go get width and then get height, cool beans. And there you are. That's all you need to do. Now this is going to pretty much handle collision detection for us, which is awesome. And then the last thing we need to do is move our torpedo around on a screen. And this is going to be a public method and it's going to be public void move. And we're going to say first off, before we do all kinds of calculations that would waste our time or the computer's time, we're going to say, hey, wait a minute. Is this torpedo even on the screen before I do anything? And if it is, we're going to say this torpedo, we want to change its x position and go this, get x velocity, get its current velocity, which is a method, real simple. And then we also want to check if the torpedo goes off the screen. So we're going to say if this, get x center. So if the center of our torpedo is less than zero in that situation, we're going to say this torpedo is now not on the screen and it will stop doing calculations and all kinds of other things. Else, if this torpedo get x center is greater than game board width, we want to pretty much do the same exact thing. 
And I know I could have did an or statement there, but I'm just trying to really explain what's going on here. So I'm saying if my torpedo goes off the screen to the left, remember I'm checking X position, then take it off. Don't show it on the screen. Don't do calculations. Don't do anything with it. If it's greater than the game board width, again, do the same thing. Don't show it. And then what we need to do is also change our Y position. And we'll just go this, get Y velocity like that. And for some reason, I went up here and left that as center. So let's scroll up there and just change that to Y position. And there you go. That got rid of that error. And then I'm basically just going to copy this right here, paste that in there, and then just change this to Y because pretty much everything else is going to be the same. Again, we're going to say if the Y position is less than zero or the Y vector, well, don't show it on the screen. And if it's greater than the game board height in this situation, don't show it on the screen. And that is it. That is how we create our torpedo in the next part of the tutorial. I'm going to take this nice torpedo and start launching it out of the spaceship. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.